welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 3 here, running on the second developer preview of Android 11 to the third developer preview released yesterday. Uh, it does include a few fixes, I suppose, and perhaps some new features. Today we'll be uh, updating our phone to that third developer preview, and of course keeping uh, root access, or Magisk in this case, and of course we'll be uh, patching the boot image doing this. So let's get started. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is to download uh, two things here. The first thing is the latest version of the SEK platform tools. Uh, you probably already have this somewhere on your computer, but if you don't, uh, you can download the one for your operating system here, uh, read and agree with the terms and conditions, and then click on the blue download button. I'm going to save everything into one folder, and I suggest that you do the same thing just to make things easier. And the next thing you want to download is the updated or the third developer preview from the developer.android.com website forward slash preview. The link will be down in the more info and it should take you to the second page. Now you don't want this page using the Android flash tool. We're going to use the factory images so it will be under the flash your device manually section. So we'll go here and click on pixel 3 and then agree with the terms and conditions and download the same file and also put that in the same folder. And once you have those two files, that's all we need to download on our computer. And as I uh, showed earlier, you'll also need the Canary version of Magisk at the time of filming, but you will probably also have that if you're already rooted on the second developer preview. But if not, uh, I'll leave a link to where you can download the Canary build of Magisk Manager, and that should be all you need as well. So why don't we start off by opening up the platform tools and extracting the platform tools folder outside, and just extract them into that same folder that you have everything else in. Once you've done that, you can close the window here, and we'll also open up the factory image, open up the folder inside the factory image, and then extract the bootloader image, the image zip file, and the radio image, those three files outside, just like that. Give this a few moments. Alrighty, so that's done. We can close the factory image, and we'll also extract the boot image that is inside the image zip file that we just extracted. Let's open that up and drag out the new boot image. So this is for the third developer preview, and we'll need to use Magisk Manager to install Magisk onto this boot image. So then we can maintain root access after updating. And what we can do here is open up a command prompt window inside the platform tools. So here we need to run some of these programs more like ADB and fastboot. To do that, we need to open up a command prompt window inside the platform tools folder. To do that on Windows, you can go up to the address bar and type in CMD and hit enter. And you'll see that it's located at the platform tools now. So if we run something like fastboot, it works, and if we run ADB, it also works. Alrighty, so I've got my console emulator here. This is the same as the command prompt, and here's the platform tools folder. So I recommend that you go back one folder, back to the Android folder where everything else is, and now we can get started. All right, so first up, we need to enable the USB debugging mode on our phone, and to do that, all you need to do is go to the settings and enable the developer options first if you haven't done so. So go to about phone, and then tap on the build number seven times until you're prompted to put in your screen lock. At that point, you'll enable developer mode. Go to system, advanced, and then tap on developer options. Scroll down a little bit and enable USB debugging. And once you've done that, let's go back to Magisk Manager. And at this point, we can go back to our computer here. So why don't we push the new boot image from a new factory image to our phone, to our internal storage, which is also mapped at the SD card. So let's see if our device is connected to our computer first via ADB. So let's type in ADB devices. And this will start up the ADB daemon and also prompt your device to allow USB debugging if you haven't done so already on this computer. You can see that the device has returned on as an unauthorized state. And what we need to do is tap on always allow from this computer so we don't have to keep on doing this and then tap on allow. So this only appears the first time you use it with a specific computer. Uh, but once you've accepted that, if we press the up arrow key to run ADB devices again, you should see that our device is connected successfully. And this means we should be able to push this boot image into our SD card or our internal storage. So let's type in ADB push, and then we'll drag in this boot image. Now, if you can't drag in anything onto your command prompt window for whatever reason, you can hold shift and right click on the image or file that you need, and then click on copy as path down here. And what you can do with that, you can right click on the command prompt window anywhere, um, and that'll paste in the path that the system has copied for you. And then the last thing you want to do is leave a space after that and type in SD card forward slash. So with the forward slash at front as well. And this will copy this boot image here into your internal storage, which is mapped as the SD card. And there we go. So that 
one file has been pushed to our device. So let's go over to our device here and we'll tap on install at the top, uh, leave the default options there. And then we're going to select the option to select and patch a file. We'd be prompted to locate that file. And what we can do here is tap on the three dots and make sure you have, well, internal storage enabled, but I'm sure you already do, or it might be on there by default and select the boot image that we just copied over. So this one, tap on that and then tap on next and then tap on let's go. Now this will download Magisk and also uh, patch the RAM disk with Magisk. So effectively installing Magisk onto that boot image. And once that is done, we're going to copy the boot image that is patched at this location over to our computer. So let's do that now that that is done. So let's type in the command here to pull the patched boot image to our computer. So let's type in adb pull and then the location of the boot image. So that's in SD card forward slash and then download with a capital D and then forward slash magisk underscore patched dot img. Leave a space after that. And for the last argument, we'll type in the location we want it onto our computer. Now we're going to put it in this Android folder and that means the parent directory of the platform tools or whichever directory you're currently in. So the command prompt here is in the platform tools folder and I want it in the Android folder, which is the parent of that. Now you can drag in another folder, for example, like this. Uh, you can also copy the path to the location you want and paste that in if you want. Uh, but a shortcut to do the parent directory, so in our case, would be to use two dots. And if I hit enter, you'll see the image get pushed back into the Android folder here, magisk underscore patched. But you can also drag in a folder if you're operating with different folder locations. But as soon as you have the magisk patched image back on your computer, uh, we are ready to update. So before we update, I recommend that you back up anything that you might need. Um, you never know when things might go wrong. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. I've already done that. So let's reboot our phone into the bootloader to start our update process. So let's type in adb reboot bootloader and this will restart our phone into the bootloader quite immediately. We'll give this a few seconds to boot into it. All right, so now we're in the bootloader. Let's type in a command to see if our device is connected in the bootloader to our computer. Let's type in fastboot devices and hit enter. You can see the serial number and the mode that it's connected in, fastboot, which is good. So let's start off by flashing the latest bootloader image that we extracted. So let's type in fastboot flash bootloader Leave a space after bootloader and drag in the image. Of course, you can also copy and right click on it. Before you press enter, actually, make sure the command prompt is selected and not the explorer window. Otherwise, when you hit enter, you'll get this message and it has nothing to do with the commands that you're trying to send. So make sure the command prompt window is active before you hit enter. And the next thing we need to do after flashing the bootloader image is to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. So let's type in fastboot reboot bootloader and hit enter and our phone should reboot itself into the bootloader. And from here, we'll update the radio image as well. So let's type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space after radio and insert the radio image here and hit enter. And once that is done, we'll run the same reboot bootloader command. So let's hit the up arrow key twice and then hit enter. Now here is the update command where we'll flash the bulk of our images. So let's type in fastboot double dash skip dash reboot update leave a space after update and drag in the image zip file, not the factory image. We'll drag in the image zip file and hit enter. Now, why we want to skip the reboot is so that our phone doesn't automatically reboot into Android after it finishes the image update. So this is so we can actually flash the magisk patched image onto our phone before it turns on. So it can pretty much be rooted as soon as we turn it back on. So now it's gonna flash the rest of the images here. We'll give this a few moments. Okay, so we're finished and that took about one and a half minutes here. And now the last thing we need to do is flash the Magis patched boot image. So let's type in fast boot, flash boot, leave a space after boot and insert the Magis underscore patched image, hit enter, and that should go pretty quickly. And now that we're ready, let's head over to our phone here and do the honors. We're going to select reboot system now, and this will boot into Android. Alrighty, so our phone has booted up here, which is a good sign, of course. It did take a while, but um, probably because it has to do some other things, but uh, we'll wait for this to kind of load up for us. There we go. And it should be doing its update, but maybe our, my notifications aren't showing because of Do Not Disturb. 
But let's have a look at Magisk and just to see if, you know, we're still rooted here. You can uh, kind of tell the padding's a bit off because the clock and the percentage are cut off a little bit. But uh, here we have everything installed and ready to go. I still have my modules here, I think. Yep, I still have those installed, which is cool. And um, we should be on this version, see, RPP3 at the bottom. And we, of course, are still running the developer preview, which is awesome. So, and everything is intact, of course. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any other questions or queries, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I'll try and respond to those. But if it's more pressing or you prefer maybe a bit more instant conversation, feel free to join us on Discord. Link is down below. Uh, we have a ton of fun over there. But, you know, the more the merrier. So thanks for watching once again. And as always, happy flashing.